Aloha, friends. As promised, this week I'm giving you a backstage pass into the mysterious world of the scientific laboratory. All right, sailors, this week there's going to be some serious science -y. So, does everyone have their thinking caps on? Roger that. I like circles. I'm going to go ahead and start my chores for the day. But please, feel free to ask any questions and I will happily take a break to answer them. See you later. We are inside the lab getting an up close look at the star of the show, our precious mud cores from 5,300 meters below the ocean surface. The first step is setting the core on a push pedestal so we can easily extract the mud samples layer by layer, carefully making sure the core is secure. Next, we drain all the excess water. Now we're ready to push down the core and access the first layer of mud. But before we can do that, we have to create an oxygen-free environment using our airtight, super high-tech chamber with the nitrogen flow. Okay, sailors slash scientists, now we're ready to take samples. We scrape the top layer as evenly as possible because all the chemical activity is happening in layers, so it is very important to keep them separated. Each one of these tubes is exactly the same volume as 1.2 centimeters in ocean floor depth. We fill each one until it is full, then move on to the next layer and tube. Um, what exactly does that mean? This is our lovely multi-core. This is a core. These are the layers we want to keep separate. Each layer is 1.2 centimeters and fits in one of these handy tubes. These little lovelies are ready for their next big stop. Paired with their paperwork, they are headed into the centrifuge. Centrifuge 5810! Andrew is here to show us how it works. This amazing piece of machinery spins the tubes at 11,000 revolutions per minute for 15 minutes. Wait, is that even right? Yep, believe it. Those are the numbers, people. This action separates the solid sediment from the water, leaving us with a crystal clear liquid called pore water. Whoa! Yes! Before and after. Not done yet! One more step! Here's Hans waiting for the nitrogen flow to fill his airtight work bag. Crazy looking bag, right? While he waits, I can show you our impressive nitrogen stock. We cannot expose the elements we are studying to our oxygen-rich environment, so we use the nitrogen to displace the oxygen. And we got lots! Looks like we have all of our supplies, are fully inflated, and ready to rock. First, Hans places a 0.45 micrometer filter on the syringe. Now he is getting a sterile bottle ready to receive the filtered pour water. The reason for the final step is to make sure our sample is purely the elemental makeup of the water. We are on the hunt for trace elements, so anything extra in the samples makes it difficult to get a clear result. Once bottled, we will keep the samples chilled at 4 degrees Celsius all the way back to the lab on land. There they will be used for various tests. And finally, our precious samples are ready. Beautiful, aren't they? But why are we so interested in this mud and the contents of these bottles? Tune in next week to find out. Thank you all so much for joining me. Make sure to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss next week's episode of My Salty Sea Life when we finally answer the burning question. What's up with this mud anyway? See you all next week. Mahalo.